Hey guys, my name is Doug with infotainment.com. Today we're working on the 2013 to 2018 Ram 1500 truck. This also includes the heavy duty. Also, furthermore, the 2019 through 2022 Ram 1500 classic body. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about an exciting new upgrade we have here at infotainment.com. That is actoring factory backup sensors to your truck. Now what you see in front of me is a large bumper. We do not carry the bumpers, but however, we will tell you the part number that you would need so you can seek one out on your own. You're gonna want one that has the holes for the parking sensors. The kit that we do carry and the technology we will supply you with is a 100% factory Mopar kit. Now we do have custom wiring, custom programming to get it all to work in your truck, but basically you're going to get four sensors, plug and play wiring, a park sense module, some little bezels to pop into the replacement bumper so your sensor can pop in nice and snug. At the very end, you're gonna to wanna to program the vehicle's body control module through the OBD port using an OBD Genie programmer. Now, those of you who have a 2018 or higher RAM truck, you're gonna to wanna to temporarily install this security gateway module bypass behind your radio in order to use the uh, programmer. But if you don't have a 2018 or higher, just forget I even said anything. All you're gonna simply do is just put the vehicle in the run position, plug in your programmer, wait for the green light, disconnect it, the programming's done. You will gain this feature. You know, a lot of you have a backup camera already or wanna add a backup camera. We also carry that and a lot more upgrades on infotainment.com. But what a great upgrade, factory rear parking sensors for your Ram truck. So the truck that's parked behind me, we're going to install this. We're gonna show you from start to finish on how to do it, so let's get started. To start to remove the rear bumper, what we need is a 15 millimeter uh, socket for two bolts here and four on the back side of the bumper and you'll need a panel tool for these two pops in the middle as well as probably the uh, wiring harnesses that connect our lights and our seven way. Now I'm also going to use some safety glasses because this truck may have quite a bunch of dirt up under here so when I start to pull this off it's going to start raining down on top of me. I'm going to save this stuff for last. Uh, I'm going to remove everything on the underside of the bumper and I'll come back up to the top side here to remove this so I can support the bumper as I remove those last bolts holding it on. So let's get underneath the bumper and start pulling some stuff out. All right, so I'm gonna start on the passenger side here. We have two 15 millimeter bolts heading towards the rear and this wiring harness here for our light. Now, you can simply remove the bulb to get more access to disconnecting it, but it does have a red security tab on there that you have to pull up before you disconnect your light. There we go. I'll set that aside. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the two 15 millimeter bolts using my impact. All right, now I'm gonna jump to the driver's side and do the same thing. All right, now that we got all the uh, hardware removed on the driver's side, we have one more plug that we have to address, which is our seven-way plug here. Uh, this plug can sometimes be a little difficult to remove, especially from underneath here if your truck is uh, dirty or these connectors get kind of caked up with dirt and salt. Um, so what I'm going to do is there's a metal clip on either side. I'm going to depress those clips and push the whole connector outwards so it's hanging out on top of the bumper. And I'll go ahead and remove that connector once I get back up. Coming back to the top of the bumper, you can see here we have our seven wake plug pulled out. Um, these are the clips that I was talking about underneath there. You're basically squeezing those in on the side so you can pop this thing out. We can depress our connector here. These are usually kind of tight. Ah, there you go. And a lot of times these things fill up with dirt and all kind of other stuff. So if you're doing this underneath there, when you pull this out, um, be mindful 
ton of stuff might be pouring down on you. We'll drop that through. And now all we gotta do is pull these two 15 millimeter bolts out and we'll be able to remove our whole bumper. So we have our bumper removed here and we have our new bumper set aside it. Uh, basically from this point you'd want to swap over whatever your new bumper didn't come with. So whatever hardware you're missing, um, you'd want to transfer that over like on ours. The only thing that we need are these clips here in the center. So I'll pop these out and transfer those over. As for the lights, our bumper came with new lights. Um, so I'm going to use those. But if you want to use these, it's really easy and actually I'll show you how they install. Um, and they basically uninstall in the same way. So we'll start with these little clips here. Pop those up and we'll pop it in to our new bumper. All right, so installing the new lights, it's simply grabbing the right light for the right side. It'll only fit in nicely one way. And once you got that light set in place, there's a clip that goes around the backside um, that you simply push into place to secure the light. All right, we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, now all we have to do is install our seven way. I'll just clip in that in. All right, from here, we'll go ahead and pop in our sensor mounts. All right, popping the sensors in or the sensor sleeves in, um, they're keyed on one side. There's a couple of grooves right here as well as in the bumper. So make sure to line those up and your sensor sleeve should just snap into place. Now, these are black. Uh, included with your kit, but if you went with a painted bumper, you can paint these to match your bumper. All right, from here, we're ready to reinstall the rear bumper. All right, with our sleeves installed, I'll flip the bumper over and install the sensors before we install it on the truck. And basically, your sensors are going to be identical. Uh, the way the factory has them oriented, inside the bumper are aiming at each other on either side. So the connector for the one nearest to your bumper light will be aiming to the outside and the connector for the sensor on the outside of the bumper will be aiming in. So you just want both of those connectors kind of pointing towards each other. And we'll do that same thing on this side. All right, now we're ready to reinstall our bumper. All right, we'll grab our 15 millimeter bolts that we removed earlier, and we'll reinstall those. All right, we'll take our last four 14 millimeter bolts, we'll head underneath and reinstall those as well. All right, from the other side, we'll go ahead and grab our previously removed 15 millimeter bolts, reinstall these on both sides. Alright, now we're ready to plug in our license plate lights on either side. We'll click those into place. Alright, and lastly we'll plug in the seven-way connector. Alright, now we're ready to wire up our sensors. 
All right, so grabbing our main harness here, we're going to grab the end that has all the sensor plugs in it. There's going to be four connectors on there. And what we're going to do is spread this out. And that last um, sensor plug here, this is going to go to the furthest sensor on the passenger side of the bumper. Once we plug that in, we'll just work it over and plug in all the remaining three heading over towards the driver's side. And we'll run the main or the bulk of the harness down the driver's side, uh, working our way to the front of the cab. So to start, I'm going to come over the driver's side um, part of the hitch here. Work it over the passenger side of the hitch. Just like that, now we'll just plug in all of our sensors. And once we have all the sensors plugged in, we can go ahead and come back and zip tie all the slack out of the wires so nothing's hanging below the bumper line. All right, now we'll just take the rest of this harness and follow our factory harness towards the front, zip tying it along the way. All right, now as going forward under the vehicle, what you want to keep in mind is any of the moving parts or hot parts, uh, you just want to avoid any of those. So if you have the dual exhaust on this side, avoid your um, exhaust piping, uh, avoid any of the suspension parts. If you can follow that factory harness towards the front, that's your best bet because you know they routed it in a safe uh, direction underneath the vehicle. All right, so with your harness, once you get to the front of that gas tank, um, it gets a lot easier to run. You have a lot more room to work in here. And really, any grommet or plastic entry point underneath your cab you can use. Um, I'm just going to use the grommet that we used previously. It already has a hole in it, um, so I'm just going to go through that one. And that hole is right in front of the middle body mount and as you can see it's just a plastic grommet here that I'll access from underneath the driver's seat area. Alright so we got our wire ran up pretty much to right underneath that grommet. That grommet is right underneath the driver's seating area so to access that we'll pull out our driver kick panel lift up our carpet a little bit and we have a wire ran through there already we have some strip caulking that we use to seal up that hole 
And the nice thing about using strip caulking um, is it's reusable. It never kind of hardens or cures. It always stays malleable and you can move it around. Push up the grommet and slide it out here. And you can see we already have a hole in this grommet. And we'll run our wire up and through the grommet. And actually the hole fits perfect. And now I'll go ahead and push this back down there. And then I'll take the strip cock and I'll push it back over that once I get it in place. All right, got the hole sealed up with the strip caulking. Um, you can use silicone, uh, but the strip cock is reusable. So if I ever plan to run another wire in the future, I can still use that same hole and uh, just remove the strip caulking and put it back. I wouldn't have to re-silicone it. All right, from this point, we're ready to move on to the next step of our install. All right, for the next step, you're gonna wanna grab the power wire that comes with your kit or the power feed uh, harness that comes with your kit. This has an easy DC connector on one end and this actually has to go to your cigarette lighter port um, right at your center stack here. So we have our radio bezel here at the bottom on the driver's side you have a cigarette or power port um, the power port that you want is the one with the key on it the other end has a battery logo on it uh, that means that that's on always the one with the key on it means that this is ignition controlled so when you turn the ignition on this will be uh, energized or have some power so that's the one we're concerned with um, we're gonna have to remove the radio uh, or the radio bezel to get to there and to do that you have this little plastic uh, or rubber cover up top, and that's concealing two seven millimeter screws. And now our bezel will just pull out. All right, with my bezel kind of set out of the way here, this is the plug that I'm gonna be interested in right here. Now I do have um, an easy DC connected in here for something um, for something else, another upgrade we did, but I'm still gonna take this off. Right here, you grab a flathead, you can press a little clip on the side and pull that out. Um, still gonna take this off and utilize it for our harness here. And you'll just grab the appropriate end of the socket here, plug that in, just like that. And might be kind of weird to get in there, but it's definitely doable without taking anything else apart. There you go. All right, with that plugged in, we can grab the other end of our connector or our harness. You got two connectors on there. We're gonna have to run this over to the driver's side kick. So going up into this opening here, right below the radio, as you see, it comes out right below the uh, driver's side AC vent. You can just kind of drop the wires down into that direction and it'll pop out down below your dash down here. We'll pull the slack up here. Up underneath the dash, you kind of want to aim towards the key cylinder. Actually, there you can see it kind of coming out there. There we go. Now we got our harness. We can go ahead and put our radio bezel back together. All right, now we're ready to grab our Park Assist module and uh, continue the install down in the kick panel area. All right, so up underneath the dash here, I went ahead and removed the knee bolster. You don't have to do this for the install. We just did this so you can get a better picture of what I'm doing under here. Um, but basically, with the harness that we dropped down, the larger plug plugs in on the left side of that. 
Um, although I'm not doing this right now, I'm just kind of showing you what's going on because in the driver kick is where this is mounted and you're not really going to be able to see what I'm doing under there. But uh, the left side is where that connector from your dash is going to go. And the right side is going to be that other harness that you ran from the rear that we have yet to run it up to our kick panel. It would go just like that and this whole module would be mounted on the inside of the kick. Now the leftover wire here coming from the dash actually has to go to your can connector that's right here wrapped in this foam. So I'm gonna peel back the foam on here All right, with our wrapping peeled back here, the green side is gonna be the, the one that you're concerned with. You're just gonna find any open port, plug your plug in there. Now try and kind of smush it back together. I'll throw a zip tie around there to keep everything nice and organized. And now I will continue to run this wire over to the kick panel area and I'll just be zip tying it along the way. All right, so we got our wire down into the kick panel area. Um, our module mounts right in here. So we still need to bring the wire over from the rear uh, coming from our sensors, which we have right here. So I'm gonna fold the carpet back a little and kind of just conceal it underneath the carpet. And I got a little bit of excess here that I'll coil up. And I'll leave that right up there so when I fold the carpet back over, it'll be all nice and concealed. And in the kick panel here, you have this uh, rubbery type sound deadening material here. There's a, a little Christmas tree pop right in the center of that. I'm gonna pop that free. Slide this out of the way. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm gonna try and show you here. So basically right here, right here you have two slits in your kick panel sheet metal. Forward of that you have a hole, a small hole, there's this large one here, there's a smaller one way at the front here, kind of making a triangle. Pretty much looks just like this if you were to set this up in there. These two tabs slide into those slots. You gotta push it forward and slide it towards the rear and that'll kind of um, hold it up in place and at the very front that center hole there a Christmas tree goes right into there and you're just gonna press that into place and that'll lock it up in there so I'm gonna plug this in before I do that just like that and now I will set the module in place and once you have it lined up you can press that Christmas tree thing in there and that'll keep it nice and secure and that's all it takes to mount the module down I'll kind of tuck the rest of the wires out of the way and bring that rubber sound deadening flap over all of the wires and press that back into place and that'll keep everything nice and tucked away for your um, your kick panel to mount back on without being interrupted by any of these wires here. So grabbing the kick panel, go ahead and line it up and I'll push this back into place. All right, and that completes the install. Now all we have to do is grab our OBD Genie programmer and plug it in and program our BCM to know that Park Assist is a feature in the vehicle now. We got the green light, so now we can remove our programmer. We won't need to use that anymore. All right, so we're gonna try out the parking sensors here. Um, so before we get into that, 
I'll get into our settings, go into safety and driving, and right here you can see our rear park sense volume, we got that on high, and park sense sound and sound with display. So the display that it's talking about is your gauge cluster. So when you throw it in reverse, that parking sensor distance meter right here uh, will illuminate as you're going back as well as the audible tone that will be played through the speakers. The audible tone, if you uh, don't want it to be very intrusive, you can adjust that volume. But we'll go ahead and demonstrate it working here. So as we get closer to the garage door, you'll hear it as well as see it on your display. When you get the solid tone, that means you're close enough and you can stop backing up. Now you see that tone was pretty loud. Um, if that's too loud, you can just turn it down. And whatever preference you want. All right, and our parking sensors work great. All right, we got the install all wrapped up here. Um, took us a good few hours to do, two, three hours to do. You wanna give yourself a full day um, if you're not familiar with vehicles. Uh, remember the bumper is not included with your kit, so you're gonna to wanna to source that bumper out uh, prior to placing your order. Um, it is a great way to add a safety feature to the truck that wasn't there originally. Um, when you go into your settings here, you can see it's on the screen now. We have park sense uh, settings in here. You have sound, sound and display, and your volume settings. Uh, when you have sound and display on, it actually uh, is displayed on your digital cluster as well. So it's a, it's a really great way to add a little bit of safety to your truck. Um, once again, especially if you have a camper shell. If you have a camper shell on there, uh, the camera may not always be your best friend. <clears throat> and uh, having that audible uh, sound in addition to the camera is a nice feature. So if you like this install and you want to see more, uh, come back to infotainment.com.